Welcome back, everyone. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people today. Relatively light day today, uh, as we've just gotten right back into the swing of things, and a lot of the call-ups and send-downs and all that has just become your daily uh, daily stuff, and nothing really major going on there. Uh, Shane Pinto, though, if you're a Sens fan, is out. Uh, no word yet on for how long. So Nick Paul is going to move to the center spot uh, on that line. And I, I love the... The work ethic of Nick Paul. Like, I, I can't overstate it enough. Uh, that being said, do I expect as many points from Nick Paul as I would from Shane Pinto? Well, shorthanded, yes, but five on five, no. So uh, that's that's a tough one for Ottawa. I like Pinto a lot, so hopefully he's not out for too long. Uh, Dallas, dealing with a lot of injuries. And this is why. <laughs> when I kept hearing, well, Dallas will be healthy this year. I'm thinking, I don't know what Dallas you're talking about. They're never healthy. So here we go uh, for their next game tonight against LA. Uh, there's no Blake Como, which sucks. I love his his uh, physicality out there. Uh, no Robertson and no Klingberg. So yeah, and there's a lot of discussions about how extension talks are going between Dallas and Klingberg, and it doesn't sound like they're going really, really well either. Uh, Braden Holtby will start tonight. He is one and one. He has a 947 save percentage. Holtby has been fantastic. That being said, uh, it is it is a lot of... For a team that needs goals, having one of their best offensive defensemen out and probably their best young forward out, it kind of hurts. But again, it's Dallas. I kind of expect that. Uh, Peter Morazic will travel with the Toronto Maple Leafs on their upcoming road trip. So that's good news for the Leafs. Um, Morazic, maybe he gets into a game there, right? So uh, the initial thinking was two weeks for the injury. Uh, Jack Campbell will play a lion's share of the games, although uh, Hutchinson is supposed to start this weekend for at least one of the games. And of course, last year they showed that with Hutchinson, they can still win games. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Edmonton, uh, a lot made of McDavid's 11 points in four games, and rightfully so. He's scoring about three points per game. And uh, if you do the math, that tells you he'll break Gretzky's record. Uh, he also has, and I think this is noteworthy, he leads the league with six power play points. Six points would almost put him in the top 10 in the league and scoring on its own. So, yeah, six power play points in four games. Do not take penalties against the Edmonton Oilers. You're not going to kill it off. It's just not going to happen. Uh, last night against Arizona was a good example where it was a pretty quiet, passive kind of game until Arizona scored. And then it was like Edmonton just took personal offense to that. And it went kind of crazy after that. Uh, Game-winning goal leaders in the NHL. So if you're looking at who's getting off to decent starts, there's some young guys here with the game-winning goals. Line A, who is still a relatively young player. He's, has, he's two. Both of them, I'm pretty sure, are overtime game winners. Lafreniere, two game-winning goals for him already. He looks like he's going to have a very good sophomore season. And Sam Bennett, two game-winning goals for Florida, continues where he left off for the Panthers last year. And I'm, I'm sure they're very grateful to have him from Calgary. Um, on the, the, the notice of players that teams are glad to have, Tampa Bay has claimed Barre Boule back from the Seattle Kraken. So he spent 11 days with Barre Boule and just misses out on their home opener. So, um, yeah, Barre Boule is back with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, I would not be surprised if they actually just, just keep, him, keep him around for a little bit. Uh, because of, you know, it's it's that injury time of year, right? So, yeah, we'll see what happens with him, but he didn't play that much in Seattle. Uh, I, I don't know when the jersey retirement happens, but come on. It's got to be a jersey retirement or something. At least some something with the opening game. Like, their home opener would be fun if they did a, a video package for all the players that were either, you know, claimed in the expansion draft that they didn't keep, like a Vanacek, or Barry Boulay who only plays like what two games, one game, um, and do some package like you know we hardly knew ye, you know that would be just I, I think that'd be fun. They won't, but anyways, um, somebody on YouTube will because that'll happen. Uh, New Jersey Colton White is on waivers. There's some debate in New Jersey fandom about whether or not he should be the defenseman that's on waivers, but he's on waivers because Ty Smith is back. So well, you may rather that it was Geertsen that went on the waiver wire. Uh, Colton White's the one that's on waivers. It may be that New Jersey just looks at their lineup and says, you know what, White's the guy who's going to clear. So it may just be a matter of, we feel that if we put Geertsen on there, that the Rangers will claim him back. 
Uh, there is there is some chess to the way that these GMs decide who does or doesn't go on waivers. And I think a lot of the time it's we think this guy will clear. It's not necessarily the best guy to, to go down, but we'll see what happens. And Ty Smith being back for New Jersey, that's huge. Very good young defenseman. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, for tomorrow night's game, their first line will be Gensel, Rodriguez, and Kapanen. So Evan Rodriguez will be the first line center. Cool. Um, at least until Carter gets back in there. And Sidney Crosby, not really close. Basically saying they haven't really tested the injury out yet in like full practices and all that. So he's not really sure. He can't give a date for when he's going to return. And of course, we're at the point where he was initially expected to return. It was probably after about the first week, week, week and a half, maybe two weeks of the season. Um... Maybe it ends up being a little bit more long-term. And you wonder, too, like, if Pittsburgh got off to a really bad start to the season, would it be different? Would they be trying to maybe get him in there a little bit sooner? Does this take the pressure off? Uh, we'll see. But for Pittsburgh, if they can continue to win games with the patchwork lineup that they're using now, fear them when they get healthy. But again, coming from a Dallas fan, when they get healthy can kind of be a misnomer at times. So it's just like, yeah, that's more of an if than a win. Um, so Buffalo news, and, and this is interesting out of the Eichel camp. So they are still getting doctors to basically write doctor's notes saying he should get the disc replacement surgery. He needs the disc replacement surgery. He wants to have artificial disc replacement surgery. And so they are taking those medical opinions. They are forwarding them to the Buffalo Sabres. And the plan is... To have the Buffalo Sabres eventually say, you know what, fine, and let them have the replacement surgery. The spinal fusion surgery that they want to perform instead is one that there's a very good chance he'll need to have done again 10 years down the road. And it's one that likely leaves him in pain for the rest of his life. The artificial disc replacement, while it's never been done with a National Hockey League player, doesn't have that same level of likelihood when it comes to needing any kind of a, another surgery or any kind of long-term life life effects of this. So he is sticking to his guns. It appears Buffalo is as well. Um, I, I and Buffalo, of course, not in any not under any pressure to trade him. Even though they're off to that three and zero start, the expectations for them this year are pretty low. So there really isn't any pressure on them to trade Eichel. But it's interesting that the agents are going out. They're getting these medical opinions and they're forwarding them to the Buffalo Sabers. And I've said this before. I agree that from from what I've seen and from what I've read, the disc replacement surgery is probably better for Eichel the person long term and for the rest of his life for when he's not playing hockey anymore, right? But the team wants to do the spinal fusion. That's what they are used to seeing and used to going through and used to doing. This is something that's been done many times over. And other teams likely would be taking the same tactic here. Other other franchises would likely be doing the same thing and saying, this is the surgery we want to get you to have. Um, it is interesting because if he had had the replacement surgery when he wanted it, he would very likely be playing hockey right now. He would very likely have been traded already. Uh, and he likely would be seen as one of the top 10 centers in the NHL right now. Um, he, he occupied that spot before last year, which was really rough for him. And I, I think that potential is still there. But the longer he's out, the longer this drags on, the worse it gets for everybody. And so we'll see. I, I honestly think eventually Buffalo is the one that's going to knuckle under here and say, we're going to go ahead and let him have this surgery. But it, it could be a while before we get there. And as I've stated before, it, it gets kind of tough because if, if your team says, we want to do this, and then the player says, I'd rather get this, and then the, the, the team goes fine, the player can get whatever he wants. It ends up becoming a situation where you could potentially have guys who are going off and getting treatments that don't work. You could have treatments have, happening that make things worse. You could have uh, three different guys with the same injury during the same season. None of them are treated the same. And it, it could just be more of a headache for the team. And it just it opens up all these other avenues. And I... I while there are problems at times with the situation with the NHL when it comes to injury treatment and all of that, and we've, we've seen this. This has been documented. Uh, this has been documented for a long time. I think there has to be a balancing act. I think there should be situations where, like this, it should go to an arbitrator. 
There should be an arbitrator. And in this situation, it should be somebody with a medical background, somebody who can look at it and go, you know what? I agree with Eichel. Or you know what? The Sabres are in the right here. And then, you know, if the player wants to continue holding out, they can, but you'd already have an arbitrator siding with the team. And then in the team's case, if the arbitrator sides with the player, then you'd have some other kind of mechanism that would kick in. But there, there should be something that can be done here because you have a very good young player who's sitting and and, and waiting. And and it, it doesn't help anybody uh, for him to wait this long. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.